counterparts. In three quarters of acute NHS trusts, a higher percentage of black and ethnic minority staff report being bullied by colleagues than white staff. In the trust where the biggest difference was reported, more than 40% of black and ethnic minority staff said that they had been harassed by colleagues compared to 18% of white staff. And in the vast majority of acute trust, BME staff don't think they'll get an equal chance promotion. Well, we're joined now by Ram Jassy, Head of Commercial Finance at University Hospital Southampton NHS Trust and Chair of its Ethnicity Inclusive Network and Joan Sadler, Associate Director of the NHS Confederation and Co-Chair of the NHS Equality and Diversity Council which produced these findings. And I, I'd, I'd like to ask you first, Ram Jassy, inevitably one asks, you're, you're reasonably for up the food chain. Have you suffered discrimination? On a personal level, no. Um, but one would say, if I compare myself to the private sector, uh, covertly, possibly. So, so in, com in contrast to the private sector, where I've experienced a number of um, promotions um, up the career, career ladder, that hasn't happened in my 16 years in the NHS. So it's kind of discreet yes. backroom discrimination rather than front of house. Absolutely. Joan? Yep, so I came into the NHS from another sector, the community sector, and I found that the kind of covert way in which people do discriminate is around, in my case, uh, harassment, you don't think like us, why haven't you done things like us? Having to always watch your back is what staff would say to you, and that's certainly been my experience. I have to say that, that I came in with a level of power, if you like. I sat on a board. I was a chair of an NHS tr trust, uh, which was a primary care trust. And I also was a national director. So I, I learned how to use that seniority, if you like, to start opening up the issues for, the, for others. But I certainly still have to watch my back. Opening up the issues for others. I mean, how aware are you personally of this kind of activity going on below you? It's a huge issue, John. Um, I mean, I chair an ethnicity inclusive network. Uh, the stories I hear, the, the, the tears I see, uh, I mean, we've got broken spirits within the National Service, and that's, that's drastic. So how can broken spirits provide health care to patients? So but the, 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 there can't be a sector of our lives that is more dependent on BME employees than the National Health Service. Absolutely. This is a crisis. How, how can it be dealt with? Well, first it's recognising, and this evidence helps you know it's it sh the spotlight has been shone on it through the workforce race equality standard which our colleagues have developed and Yvonne Coghill I need to thank her for that but she has brought a level of leadership that remembers it historic to where we are today hmm. and how it's happened is because we have staff who are dedicated you know medically they think this is professional I can't walk away from this as other public sectors might and also the system has for the first time today had to look at the evidence from your own national NHS staff survey which cannot be disputed. But you see, one of the things you've said is that uh, it's about promotion in part. You know, the, 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 a lot of discrimination in the promotional process. Mm -hmm. And if people are not coming into managerial positions, even in small units, um, it's going to go on, isn't it? It, it is, John. Um, I think we've got huge BME talent. Um, you've got the Ready Now programme. Um, it's, it, it's there, it's, it's, it's being prevented to rise to, to those leadership positions. Um, we need talent management, we need succession planning, we need the right leadership to, to help support that process. Um, so so there's, it, it's, it's there to, to, to move it forward. And the innovation and the creativity that would come as a result of that would actually support Simon Stevens' five-year forward review. Joan Sadler, are you confident that the leadership exists now to really make profound change in this direction? No. Uh, we have shone a spotlight and so it's now what do you do with the data? So my confidence is that we have now got indisputable data that we now have to A, strategize on with BME people, NHS employers and the Leadership Academy have gone some way to start doing that. We have to bring together various strategies that depend on system leadership this is not an issue for BME people to solve, it's system leadership. So don't wait for that heroic form of leadership which we've so often seen in the past. And well, I think we don't have that. Viewers will have that no, which you started that whole paragraph with mm -hmm. ringing in their ears. Mm -hmm. Joan Sadler and uh, uh, Ram Jassy, thank you both very much indeed for talking with us. Matt. Thanks, John.
France has declared a state of natural disaster in the areas worst hit by severe flooding after decades.